Hi guys, my name's Josh and today I want to teach you how to conduct market research for your music or your business. If you're struggling to reach your target market or if you're starting a business or if you simply don't want to waste time, money and resources, then you need to conduct market research. Now, conducting market research allows you to gain a lot of valuable insights for your business, such as defining who your target market is, testing your product and service in the market before you launch, and finding things out about the market itself, such as the market share and the income streams. So, let's get into it. Now, within market research, there are five main types of research. You have surveys, interviews, focus groups, secondhand research, and a relatively new one, practice by research. So first with surveys. Now, surveys help you to capture demographical research such as age, gender, location, income, um, as well as a few other things. And this is helpful for you guys to know as a business as it'll help you define who your target market is and then you know where to spend your marketing budget instead of targeting random people and wasting time, money and resources. Now, surveys can be captured in a few ways. You could do them in person as, say, a street team, or you could do them online with tools such as Google Forms. And I would personally recommend Google Forms because it's a lot easier and it saves a lot of time. You basically build the survey, and then you send a link to your survey participants and ask them if they could fill it out for you and gain some feedback. However, with any research, and this is very, very important, you should always abide by the ethics rules of actually conducting and taking personal data from other people. And this includes stating exactly what the research is for, stating where the research is going to be stored, and then you should always, always abide by the GDPR rules for collecting personal data on other people. And you should always include a clause that says if this person would like their research redacted, they can do so by, say, emailing you and saying, I would like my research redacted, and then you have to take their results out of your research. This is all to do with collecting personal data on other people, and if you don't do this you can get into a lot of trouble because this is other people's personal information. As well as this when actually building the surveys you should very much consider how the questions are phrased. Because it's not a one-to-one -one direct communication with you and another person this means that they might misinterpret the question and then misinterpret their answer and give you an answer that isn't quite related to the question. So you do want to test these surveys beforehand with say friends and family to see how they react to certain questions. And as such, surveys are great for capturing short form information, but they're not great for having a more open dialogue with your research participants. So for research method number two, this is where interviews come in. And interviews are very, very great for actually collecting the psychographical research data of your research participants. And this includes information like the activities, interests and opinions. And this allows you to begin building a bigger picture of exactly who your target market is. And then once you've collected these psychographical data, you can understand where and how to actually market your products and services towards them. So, for example, if you find out that your target market likes attending football games or they like watching football on the TV or generally sports in general, a good way to actually market towards them would be to buy some advertising space around the pitch or buy a TV ad on the TV channel that's showing these sports. Because then you actually know that they like sports, where can you market your product and you meet them in the middle. Now, because of the nature of interviews, they do actually take a little bit longer to complete because it requires you to actually be there and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your fan base or your research participants. And this is why it's a really good idea to put on the end of your surveys to ask the survey people if they would like to be part of the research further and actually be part of an interview. And if so, ask them if they could leave their email so you could contact them to arrange the interview. It's also a very good idea to actually take a recording of the interview, whether that's done virtually on, say, Zoom, or it's done in person, say, with a camera, um, or even just your voice notes on your mobile phone. And then at a later date, go and transcribe this interview so you can fully understand what was said and within what context it was said. And again, similar to building a survey, you want to be very careful and cautious about the way that you word the questions. You don't want to accidentally influence the answers of your research participants. You want them to be unbiased from yourself. You want to capture exactly their, what their views, interests and opinions are. 
And as such, it's more of a exercise about learning when to listen and when to speak and finding a perfect balance between the two, which can be a very tricky skill to master, but it's a skill that you're gonna need if you actually conduct these interviews yourselves. And then this leads us on to research method number three. This is to do with focus groups. And focus groups are incredibly similar to interviews in that you actually are having a direct one-to-one -one conversation with your research participants. But instead of it being one person, you're having more of an open dialogue between a group of people. So you can actually begin to capture the differing opinions and have a debate with your research participants themselves exactly in real time as it's going on. And again, you're engaging in this open dialogue with other people, which can lead to some very incredibly interesting insights. They're basically captured in the same way as interviews in that you need to organize a time and date for everybody to be present. And it's also a good idea to, again, record and transcribe these interviews, um, but they'll probably take a little bit longer because there's multiple people talking, but it's still important so that you can refer back to this transcription and actually understand under which context things were being said. And a little tip slash trick for actually conducting focus groups is to incentivize a reason to, for people to actually attend the focus groups. And this comes in the form of saying doing a voucher giveaway or providing free food at the event. At the end of the day, these people are giving you your time in exchange for you gaining valuable insights about the future of your business. However, and I cannot stress this enough, one of the biggest issues with focus groups is trying to avoid degradation between your research participants. So for example, you might have people from multiple different backgrounds and it's great to have a range of different people so you can actually capture a range of different ideas and opinions. But if somebody, say, is in a higher position in a job role, that might make other people feel inferior to them and they might not want to speak up as much. So it's important to provide a safe space in which to have this conversation, otherwise people might start feeling upset and feel awkward. And the last thing you want to do is upset your research participants, especially when they're engaging in an open discussion to provide insights to your business. Now, the fourth research method is secondhand research. And this is research that you collect, but is not necessarily conducted by yourself. And it includes things such as trade magazines, books and academic journals, and basically anything else that you can refer to that has been done by other people, but you haven't actually conducted yourself. And that's why it's called secondhand research. And this research practice is conducted in a slightly different way to the other three, because it requires you to stay very much up to date with what's going on within your industry and within your market. So for example, in the music industry and the music business, it's a very good idea to sign up to newsletters to receive news on a daily basis to find out what's going on in the industry and how that might affect the business in the future. And it's a very good idea to actually do research on, say, academic journals to find the theories that are backing up and underpinning the actual practice of your music business. As well as this, data from industry reports are very valuable pieces of documents, especially when it comes to funding and bidding for grants. And that's because they'll actually include information about market share and the health of your market, which somebody who is offering funding to you will very much want to know about because that'll actually show them how their money is going to be spent. And funding bids and grants and anything to do with money I will actually be doing in a later video this month and if it is out by the time you are watching this it'll be linked up here somewhere. And lastly the fifth method for market research is practice by research and this is a relatively new research method and it comes from an academic background and it's to do with capturing insights that are not necessarily to do with just data and numbers. And it basically involves the practice of explaining a certain situation by experience instead of explaining a certain situation by data and analytics. And it's become a bit of a controversial research method because of this, because people like to rely on numbers and data, which are great points for actually showing you where to go and for providing you with tangible market research. But it's incredibly important to understand that there are other forms of market research that don't include analytics, numbers and data. And one of the biggest issues with this research method is actually finding out how you can capture your experience because you can't film every day of your life, you know. You don't live in a film and you can't refer back to that when you actually want to find out certain insights about how you experienced a certain situation. Instead, you have to very specifically choose which points you target to actually provide evidence for. And this can be done by, say, writing in notebooks. It could also be done by filming a certain situation, but again, you can't film everything. And basically you want to find out 
things that can actually help you to provide examples for your work. So say any documents that you produce as part of running your business, such as marketing plans, business plans, that can all be used for evidence for practice by research. Even things such as lyric sheets in music, that can be used as evidence for practice by research as well. And that's everything you need to know about market research and how to conduct market research for your business, from actually the five different types of market research to how they can actually benefit and provide certain results and the pros and cons of each research method. Have you guys ever conducted market research for your business or would you like to? Let me know in the comments down below and if you have any further questions about market research, pop them down there too and I'll do my best to answer them. If you would like some help in conducting market research, please feel free to get in contact with me. I've conducted market research for previous businesses, my current business, and then for academic purposes. So it's a practice that I understand very well and I actually take a lot of enjoyment out of doing it because it can help provide you with insights to further your business and provide a future foundation to actually build your business upon. And that shit for me is very, very exciting. Might be nerdy for some people, but I do find it very, very exciting. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. And if you do, hit that notification bell because you'll get a notification whenever I upload a new video. My name has been Josh and I help musicians and music businesses with their management, marketing, press and PR and events. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in getting involved in, you can visit the links down below on my website, on my social media and feel free to send me a DM or an email on the platform of your choice and let's get a conversation going and I'll see how I can help you guys. But until then, I will see you guys later and I hope you have a good one.